Yeah. Connor, one of our high schoolers who went on the trip with us, actually put that whole video together. Such a blessing. He's really gifted with that. Connor, thank you for doing that. Um, two weeks ago, we were in North Carolina. Back in September, they had um, some really bad flooding. If you're not aware, Hurricane Florence hit and just kind of hovered over North Carolina. And we were in the southern part of North Carolina where the floods have been worst. One of the houses that we worked on that you saw in that video actually had been almost completely underwater. There had been eight feet of water there. And so everything in their home was damaged. And we got to take some of that out. We had seven people go with us. Um, if you're here and you were on that trip, would you stand real quick just so everyone can see who you are? That's awesome. I think most of you guys are here. Yeah. And thank you guys for going with us on that. It was, it was such a blessing. I've been on a couple trips like this, but this was one of the best ever to be on. It was great. We're going to hear from a couple people who are on that trip. So Janina, Heather, if you guys want to come up, you can make your way this way. But we had seven people on this trip with us, some, a high schooler, a couple. Most of them had never been on mission trips before. And we actually left. We flew out on a Monday morning. We met here at Calvary at 3 a.m. and headed to the airport. And that was the start of the trip. And with a start like that, so often you would expect, okay, this is going to be rough. This is going to be dramatic and emotional and just a difficult thing, but the people who came were just such a blessing to have with us and had such great attitudes along the way. We were staying at a church there in um, North Carolina called Calvary Chapel of the Sand Hills, and they set up their whole children's ministry as just kind of a bunker for everyone that was serving there. We were there with a team from New Jersey, and we stayed at the church, and we did our meals with the church, and we'd go out day by day and do work. Some of the days we were going and clearing out homes where all of their property had been damaged and had to be bagged up and put on the side of the road for the trash. We were clearing trees. We spent some time at a distribution center just boxing up food and getting everything ready for people so they could come and get it. And the last two days, some of those pictures you saw where they had the little dogs, we actually spent time under their houses. Their house flooded right up to the floorboards and so all of the insulation under the house is rotted out and molded. And so we spent two days cutting all of that out for them and preparing that house so that new insulation could be put in. And all along the way, we saw God show up in so many things. And I don't want to tell too many stories and take away from what they're going to share, but I'll tell you the thing that blessed me the most, the thing that was the biggest highlight for me was watching our team serve and watching these people, some of who had never been on a mission trip before, but seeing them have the chance to step out and get involved in what God was doing over and over and over, we'd be driving from job site to job site, and I'd hear someone in the back of the car say, mission trips are awesome. I love mission trips. <laughs> it really was the sense of the whole thing that God was with us, and we were excited just to be part of what he was doing. So I don't want to take away from any of what they're going to say. I'm going to hand it over to Janina, who is with us, and let her share with you guys. Actually, wait. You use this mic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, everyone. Hi. I'm Janina. Uh, thank you, Wes, for that wonderful introduction. So, uh, yeah, as he mentioned, um, my husband, Travis, and I uh, were one of the few that were very, very, very fortunate enough to have been part of, met, and grown with this amazing team. <laughs> um, sorry, I didn't mean to... I wasn't planning on getting, like, super emotional. <laughs> um, yeah, we were, we were part of this amazing crew that got to go to North Carolina. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> sorry. It's cool. Thank you, thank you. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So we were part of this amazing team that went to North Carolina to help with the hurricane relief efforts. And um, I really wish that you guys could have all been there because what I'm about to say and what you guys have seen already and what you guys are gonna hear today, I just don't think it's gonna cut it, you know? There's really not enough words to describe the joy, the love, the, the peace and the just the absolute sense of fulfillment that we have seen and heard and, and received. Just being there, just by taking a little time and, and giving back 
putting in a little effort and giving back to those who are in need. They definitely needed us. And um, a little backstory: I uh, even even when I was younger, I've always had this very very strong urge. God has always put it in my heart to just be out there in the world, be out there, do something, and just serve. And um, for as long as I can remember, that's all I ever wanted to do. If there was anything I wanted to do in this world and to leave this world with, it was that. It was to just be out there for God to give me the courage, the wisdom, the strength to, to whatever it is I needed to be out there and serve and, you, and, and to utilize me so that I can make a difference in someone else's life. And um, being with Travis all these years, it grew for us to be this family vision so that we can be out there. He's very good with um, building and working with his hands. He loves doing that. I'm a nurse. So I was hoping I would be out there in the world doing CPR. But, but that opportunity never came. We were hoping that we were going to go out there to underdeveloped countries, all that kind of stuff. But it never seemed like it was the right time or the right moment, whatever it was. And then this mission, mission trip came up. And uh, after we prayed for so long for a great opportunity, I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't have had it any other way. It was the best first mission trip we've ever had. And uh, well, the, see the thing is, it was just amazing for me to be able to be in a community that was constantly, every day, talking about the love of God and giving him so much praise just in our work, uh, even during through the tough times. We, you know, he put it in our hearts uh, to go wherever it was, job site to job site, whatever that may be. And he put it on our hearts and guided us to put on those hazmat suits and crawl under houses and take out the bad stuff. And yes, it was very, it was a lot of work, it was a lot of hard work. But the joy and the love that came from that, the kids that were, that were running around smiling and laughing, and you guys saw in the pictures, it looked like we were having a lot of fun because the reality it was it was a hard work, but it was a lot of fun because we brought such good hearts with it. God was so with us, and it felt just absolutely amazing. And um, there was... Uh, it was pretty cool because I felt like we did a lot of changing in our own hearts and in others. There was this one man and we were, we were just kind of uh, helping out actually with another crew. We only spent a little time with him but we were helping him build, rebuild his little house. And little did we know at the end of our trip, he came to visit us on the last night and we found out that he hasn't been to church in years. And finally, I guess he mentioned to one of our, our members that he is now ready to finally redevote himself to God all over again. And so for that to happen, just because we took a little time, a little effort to, to be there with them was truly amazing. And there were some sad times. I, f I felt very sad when, when on our first day we were you know, uh, hauling out a bunch of this moldy and really, you know, bad stuff from homes. And it just makes me think, wow, this is, this was their life. This is their livelihood. That, this was their home. You know, you see the furnitures and, and their belongings, their personal belongings. And it was very heartbreaking for me. But it, it makes you realize that these are all stuff. This is just stuff. And what really counts was the time that we got to spend with the kids, the times that we got to spend talking about their awesome property that has a huge history behind it, the time that we got to spend with Dave, getting to know him a little bit more. He's a retired veteran, and, and he has quite the amazing stories. <laughs> um, that's what really counts in this world, and it just reminds me of you know, you really have to be aware of where you want to store your treasures, right? So, but anyway, um, this trip also did a lot for me personally. It, uh, it really stirred a lot in my heart, uh, and it kind of ensured the kind of person I want to be. 
kind of wife, daughter, whatever role I'm playing, uh, ensured me that I, I do want to be this kind of person to go out there and live for other people for the glory of God, to show him that he is very much capable of supplying you whatever you may need so that you can push on and, and, and do these wonderful things. Because at the end of the day, you think to yourself, who am I? What do I really have to offer in this world? You know, I, you know, I live my day, I have my work, I have you know, my responsibilities at home, and that's all good and fun. And we kind of go on autopilot, and you don't think you have much to offer. But the reality is, is that we have so much to give, so much. And that's all I ever want, is for God to just see us see us in that light. And so, uh, in closing, I'll pass it on to Heather. <laughs> and um, thank you very much, you guys, for this opportunity. So, I'm Heather. Um, Hi. <laughs> um, so, the day I walked into the sanctuary and saw up on the screen that they were doing this trip, my heart just started to like, We'd lived in North Carolina for a couple years. <laughs> You're contagious. <laughs> so a piece of my heart is there. And so I just, I just thought, you know, is this just me? Is it the Lord? So I started praying and, you know, putting that fleece out there. And God was faithful because especially through this Nehemiah study, the whole idea of the rebuilding and everything, and this is going to go on for years down there. But the scripture that I had uh, gone over and then I'd kind of reviewed it is from week four, uh, week three, day four, Nehemiah 4.10. It says, in Judah, it was said, the strength of those who bear the burden is failing. <laughs> there is much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And it's true, the people there have been so devastated. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Um, this, this one family that we helped, uh, Janina mentioned them, they're, they're, they, the property they live on, it, it's, it's huge, and it's been in their uh, family for over 150 years. The, this family are members of the Lumbee Indian tribe. And so the government willed it to them. It, can, it has to stay in the family. It can never be sold. And I got to know Miss Doreen, or Miss Noreen. Doreen. <laughs> I don't know, I, the name's mixed up. Anyhow, she was this elderly gal. She was actually, you know, great grandmother. And she walked the property with me and told me the stories and walked me through the family cemetery, which was just mind-blowing because some of the people, their birth dates were early 1800s. And they had lived in a home on the property which had been devastated years before by Hurricane Matthew. Matthew. And... So their house was uninhabitable. So they had gotten mobile homes, she and then her daughter and some of her grandkids and other extended family lived there. But she, she told me, as we walked the property and she showed me the cemetery, she said, yeah, after that last hurricane, she goes, we came back to the property and I wasn't sure if I'd see my kinfolk floating. <laughs> so she, had, she had a really good attitude about things. But she'd had a lot of family devastation loss of her husband, two sons, a son-in-law over the time. So they stopped trying to rebuild the house and they were living in these mobile homes which had gotten flooded. And that's where we took out all the, um, the insulation and everything and a few critters. Janina <laughs> got to share in that. And, um, but anyhow, it was just, for me, uh, I pitched in and did where I can, but I, it's like, where did, the Lord had me go there to make the familial uh, connections, to connect with the people, to hear their stories, to share um, with them, and to, to encourage them. And, and um, Ms. Noreen had said, you know, it really made a difference to her that people weren't just there working on the house. They were there connecting 
with she and her children and her grandchildren and even some of her great-grandchildren. And so to me, the being the hands and feet of Jesus there was a, was a, a real relational thing. And so that was huge. And just getting to have that connection, but also as Janina said, you realize that all this material stuff is nothing. And the, the personal connections are what matter. And so, um, you know, but we, we helped them clear the rubble so that they could start the rebuilding. And with the other homes too, with the fella Dave, and uh, you know, he was, he was quite a character. Um, great stories. And then the first place that we went to, the first job site, the house was uninhabitable. So basically the crew hauled everything out and this gal had children and we her to their toys and everything. But it just is a reinforcement that we need to store our treasure in heaven. And that was a real encouragement to me for myself and just in my attitude towards people and my kids and my grandkids. It's relationships, not stuff. And so um, that and being, being part of this team, yeah. Connor was the youngest, I was the oldest, so we were good bookends. <laughs> and uh, it was just, it was really a blessing getting to connect with people that I really didn't know and, and the unity that God brought between our team and the team in North Carolina and the New Jersey team. It's just really, you know, when people have the Holy Spirit, you really have that familial connection with them. And, and the unity was just huge, a huge blessing. So anyhow, that's, that's my piece. <laughs> and I'll hand it off to Wes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sharing. And there's more that they could share. I'm sure there are so many stories if you... Grab them or one of the other people that were on the trip after the service. Yeah. I'm sure they'd love to tell you more. But thank you guys so much for coming up and sharing. Okay. I'll let Your you guys turn to cry. Down. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try not to. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. It really was an emotional trip, a special trip to be on. And, and to see everything God was doing in the midst of it, I think there was so much exemplified in the people that were there with us of that heart to go and serve and to step out of a comfort zone into a whole other culture. We got there and right away we were known as there were two teams. There was us and the team from New Jersey and we were very quickly identified as the team from California. And Everywhere we went they called us Hollywood. <laughs> and, and it turned out they actually had this expectation of us to, I don't know where California got this, but they expected us to be lazy. They expected us to not want to work hard. And yeah, to be laid back. Maybe that's a kinder way to say it. And at the end of the trip, the pastor actually apologized for that expectation. He said, wow, like you guys showed up and we didn't really know what to think. You're from California. But wow, you guys worked so hard and got so much done. And, and really, that's so much credit to the team we had. If you have a Bible with you, you can open it up to Nehemiah chapter 2. I want to read just a few verses to you that I think sum up how all of this happened. Nehemiah chapter 2. Lord, speak to us through your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna pick up in verse 15 of Nehemiah 2. If, if you read through Nehemiah with us, you just finished on Friday, way to go. But if you're not from there, yeah, you can clap for that, it's awesome. I'm so excited. That was such a great study to go through. But if you're not familiar with the story of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was living in Assyria. He was working for the king in the palace. He was a cupbearer to the king, but he's from Israel. He's from Jerusalem, and he heard that the walls had been broken down, the gates had been burned by fire, and he began to pray and said, God, we need to do something. Send someone, do something. And, and the opportunity arises for him to go. And in Nehemiah 2, verse 15, where we're picking up, he has just gotten to Jerusalem to begin the process of rebuilding. So if you'll read with me, it says, Then I went up in the night by the valley, and I inspected the wall. I turned back, I entered by the valley gate, and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. And I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the rest that were there to do the work. Verse 17, then I said to them, you see the trouble we're in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer suffer derision. 
And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And their response is so encouraging. They said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. But when Sinbalat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite and servant and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they jeered at us and they despised us, saying, what is this thing you're doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Verse 20, then I replied to them, the God of heaven will make us prosper. And we, his servants, will arise and build, but you have no portion or right or claim in Jerusalem. He dismisses the opposition. But the two things that I see here are, one, the people's response to Nehemiah, they strengthened their hands for the good work. They were ready to get dirty. They were ready to go and clear rubble, to do something difficult. And two, Nehemiah's response in verse 20 to the opposition, he says, the God of heaven will make us prosper. He doesn't say, you know what, we're just gonna work really hard and ignore you and we'll figure it out. He says, you know what, God is on our side. God is moving in the midst of this. That can't be denied. And I think there's something so unique in the body of Christ when these two things come together. When the body of Christ says, yes, we're gonna work hard. We're gonna strengthen our hands for the good work. And when we're working at something that God is behind, he makes it prosper and such unique things happen in that. There are stories upon stories upon stories we could share from this trip and, and stories that we don't even know because we were there for five and a half days and then left and there's more that God has done, I'm sure, that we haven't heard about, that we may never hear about till we get to heaven, the impact that we were able to have there. I wanna share two stories with you kind of from this heart of that we strengthened our hands and God strengthened us in it. We went to do the hard work and God met us there. There's a verse, uh, Zach reminded me of it. In 1 Corinthians 14, 12, um, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says, since you are eager for manifestations of the spirit, he says, strive to excel in building up the church. They desire something good. They want to see the Holy Spirit do a work. And that's our desire, isn't it? That we would see God do a work in this day, in this church, in our hearts. And he says, the way for that to happen is that you would strive to excel in building up the church, And we got to see this happen on such a practical level. And something that we saw through this wasn't some amazing thing where we went and we said, you know what, we're going to do something for God. And we're going to see God do something. And they said, okay, there's a, there's a house that everything in it has been ruined by mold and by flooding. So we need to clear it. We need to take everything out and put it by the curb. I said, okay, this, this man's house was flooded. We need to help him with that. We need to rebuild his porch. We need to talk to him, be his friend, and hang out with him. These weren't things we were going, and we got there, and said, okay, how can we be a blessing to God right now? <laughs> Just practical, humble things that we're doing. Getting under a house and clearing out insulation. Janina mentioned Dave a little bit. We were at his house. Um, Dave is a really interesting fellow. He's an older guy. He's a career military man. He'd been in the Army for over 20 years, almost 30 years. He's retired now. And um, he had actually, his house had been damaged, but he hadn't asked for help. He was volunteering somewhere. And people kept asking, oh, doesn't your house need help? Don't you live in that area that was damaged as well? He's like, yeah, but other people need it more. Other people need it more, so don't worry about me. And eventually they finally made their way down to the list to Dave's house, and we got to be there that week and help him with that. And as we were there, we just started talking with him, connecting with him. He needed a new uh, water heater, and so some of our guys crawled under the house with him, and they are just in the mud under the house looking at it and pulling it out. And he was just having so much fun having people there that would jump in with him and do that. We took him out to coffee. We got to hang out with him a little bit. And Dave is the one that Janina was telling you on Friday night, the church did a barbecue and they invited some of the people whose houses we'd been working on. And Dave came out and, and he was just sitting with us eating dinner. And he's a real quiet guy. So he's just sitting there eating his food and kind of just looking around. And you can tell he's just thinking about things, watching everything that's going on. And, and this was really special to me. I'm gonna try not to cry. See if one of us can do it. <laughs> My biggest prayer going into this trip was for the unity of the team that would be there. Some of these people, like Travis and Janina, I had never even met before we went. So I didn't even know what to expect. And, and there's something so special that happens when we're unified. And Jesus even said that it's by your love for each other that they'll know me, that they'll know that you're mine. And so my prayer was, God, unify us. Let us be one let us work together well. Let us be friends with each other by the end of this as well. And that did happen. We become like family. You're driving around in a car together, sleeping in a room together, eating every meal together, under a house in mold together. Like every bit of it. 
And God answered that prayer in such a big way because one, just we saw that in the relationships and we got to get to know each other on such a deep level that's something that's so special. But beyond that, Dave is sitting there with us and he's sitting right across the table from me and he's looking around and he's talking to people a little bit and just kind of observing. And he went over to the pastor and he began to talk to the pastor and afterward, Pastor Ben came over to me and he's telling me David's just left at this point. And he says, Dave just rededicated his life to the Lord. He hasn't been in a church in 20 years. And it was amazing. And he said the reason what he saw that made him want to do that was he saw how unified all the people here were. He said, it's like a family. There's something here, yeah. It was amazing. He said, I see in you guys, this is like a family that you didn't even know each other before this trip, but you can love each other this much. And that touched him. The point he said, you know, I need to get back to God. I need to come to church. I'm going to be there Sunday. He committed to that. And, and it was just so amazing to hear that and to hear not only did it happen, but it was a direct answer to our prayer that our unity would be there. A second story for you, Pastor Ben is the pastor there. And I got to hang out with him a little bit. I was actually in his office printing out our boarding passes. Friday night, we're getting ready to leave the next morning. So, okay, let's get the boarding passes printed out. Let's get some of these logistics <laughs> figured out. And he was in there hanging out. And we got to talking for a little bit and just talking about ministry, talking about life. And we, have, we know some of the same people from when I lived out that way. And, and we're just chatting. And there wasn't any weight to the conversation. It never took a serious turn. We're just, it felt like old friends catching up a little bit. And we go out from there to dinner. And he goes up to pray for the meal. And he actually brought me up on stage with him. He said, I, I want Wes to come up here really quick. And he said, I, and I want to be clear, I still don't know what happened in this. But he said, Wes and I were just talking, and he encouraged me so much. He said, I was feeling down. I was discouraged. I was having trouble keeping going. I felt like I was just stuck in the mud. So he, but Wes and I were talking, and he said something. He doesn't even know what, but it gave me what I need to keep going. And I thought that was such a neat picture of everything that we're doing on these type of trips, in this type of work. That we go thinking, yeah, we're going to clear out mold. Yeah, we're going to rip out some insulation. Yeah, we're going to bag up some wet property. We're going to clear a few trees. But God says, that's what you think you're doing, but you're doing so much more. There is so much more happening beyond what we're seeing in this. And I think as a church and as God's people, we need to recognize that. That we see what we're doing on a practical level, but there's so much more that God is doing that we have no idea of. And Janina and Heather both shared, and I think the entire team would share. I actually asked them on the way to the airport. I said, hey, what did God do in you on this trip? What, what's he been speaking to your heart? And everyone had such good answers, just seeing all the things that he's doing in them. And they're really hearing from the Lord in it. And that, it brought something to my mind that I want to leave you guys with today, that we were able to make a difference in that town, in that community, in those people over there. But God didn't stop at us making a difference there. He was making a difference in us. He was working in us along the way. And there's something so unique to the work of God in that, that it's never only an outpouring. It brings to mind for me the verse in John chapter 7. Jesus is at the temple. There's a feast going on. There's a crowd, and he stood up on the steps of the temple and just yelled out. He said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And I love this verse, and I love to think about it this way, that he doesn't say, into your heart will flow rivers of living water, but that it will flow out of you. And we have to recognize that we are a conduit. We are the pipe for what God is doing. And as we open ourselves up to the work that he has, his spirit flows through us. And just like in anything, if it's flowing through you, you're affected by it. If we close ourselves off, there's still water there, but it becomes stale because it's not moving. It becomes stagnant. But as we keep ourselves open to the work that God is doing, as we let him work in us and work through us, he keeps us fresh. He's continually pouring through us. And we get to see him affecting the people around us. And through that, we get to see him affecting us and, and bringing change within us. And I want to encourage you guys, especially as we come into this holiday season, for so many of us, that can be a difficult time with, with family that are difficult to interact with maybe. And we have such an opportunity for God's spirit to flow through us to them. That we could be refreshed, that they could be refreshed. I want to challenge you with that. This week we have Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. Consider how you could be a pipe of that for God. To let his spirit, to let his living water flow through you to the people around you. We saw this in such a unique way. And, 
And all seven of us that were on that trip and on that team were so blessed to see God working through us and changed by that experience of saying, yes, I'm doing something, but it's affecting me even more than it's affecting them. There's a joy there. There's a fulfillment there that we don't get without being the hands and feet of Jesus, without looking to the people around us. So I encourage you, especially in this holiday season where we have such unique opportunity to connect with people that we wouldn't naturally connect with, to sit down and have a meal with people maybe that are uncomfortable to do that with, that we have an opportunity to show his love. We have an opportunity to bring his spirit into situations. And we'll be blessed through it. We'll be grown through it. But we never know what God would want to do there. Just as we saw in Nehemiah, I'll leave you with this thought. The first half of Nehemiah, it's all about building the wall. The second half of it, it's all about the people because through the work that they were doing, God was doing a work in them. He was calling their hearts back to himself. As they did this physical labor, he was doing something in their hearts. He was doing something within them that would pour out of them. So would you pray with me that we would have that heart to be his hands, to be his feet to the world around us?